So I bought a 4090 to play at 1080p. And today we're going to be checking that out in most modern titles to see how well a 4090 handles modern games at 1080p. It goes without saying that the 4090 is absolutely going to be CPU bottlenecked in most instances, and I am fully aware of that. The whole point of this video is just to see what laughably high frame rates I can achieve in some of these games. Because for myself, I am a frame snob. I do not care about 4K 30 FPS or even 4K 60. I want the highest frame rate possible with the highest settings possible. So that is the entire reason I invested into a 4090 on top of the content creation side of things as well. So before all the comments come in and start flaming me for buying a 4090 at 1080p, I'm doing it for the views. I'm doing it for the frame rates. I'm doing it for us. I'm doing it for science. I will eventually be updating my monitors to 1440p 144Hz as well because the 4090 is again just laughably CPU bottleneck at 1080p and you can get 144Hz in most games at 1440p with a 4090 so that's now my new sweet spot. So if you want to support that endeavor of me getting 1440p 144Hz monitors in the future, like the video, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into these ridiculous results. Check this out. Let's test out some Plague Tale Requiem here. I have the game running at full screen, 1080p, with DLSS on quality, frame generation on, of course reflex is turned on natively, and I have everything turned up to ultra, including the ray traced shadows here. So this game is actually pretty beefy for most modern hardware right now. But let's go ahead and see what a 4090 runs this game at at 1080p. <laughs> this game is just bonkers for graphics. I did not know how pretty this game actually was. I didn't play the original game, so like I have no reference of how pretty this series can actually be. But holy crap, this is unbelievably gorgeous. And of course, it has some micro stutters in here as well from loading up some of the uh, shaders, I think is what it's loading up. But we're getting about 160, 170 FPS here with frame generation on, which is just incredible and if we start sprinting let's see what it drops down to so we're at about 130 ish and wow this the graphics of this game this game is absolutely crazy for graphics right here the lowest we drop down to is like what 115 i think i saw there for like half a second so we can drop all the way down to like 115 but oh man look at this river though okay yeah, I see why everyone was telling me to play this game for graphics and stuff like, jeez. This is unbelievable. And for CPU optimization, dude, this game isn't even flexing my CPU. Let's go ahead and see what we get without frame generation here. Wow. So, okay, here's without frame generation and we are still getting 114 FPS. That's still insane that we're only dropping to like 80 something FPS or 70 there. I think I saw 71 depending on where I look. That is unbelievable that you could technically in some games actually play at 1080p 240 hertz. You actually could utilize that with max settings, with ray tracing on, at 1080p with just with big games, like not just like Fortnite, not the Apex or whatever, you know, not those kind of like lower end graphics games. Something like Plague Tale Frickin' Requiem can get almost 240 FPS depending on where you look. That's insane. All right, let's see what Borderlands 3 does in the situation here. So if we move over to here, you can actually see in the Riva tuner numbers, my CPU is only using like 15 total percent of itself. Our GPU is actually flexing pretty hard, which is good to see. It's utilizing the full potential of the 4090 there, and we're getting over 300 FPS in the main menu. But what I want to do is if we go back over to here, go to the options, go to visuals, I'm actually going to run the benchmark. So the benchmark over here, so I last ran this benchmark January January 30th, 2021. So I believe that was like right after I got my 3080. I believe I tested out this game to see how it would actually run. And so you can see the average FPS that I had was 117. So comparing 117 FPS with my 3080 to the 4090, let's go ahead and do this. All right, so here we are inside of the benchmark and we're going to flip over to here so you guys can watch the numbers as we go through. We are getting about 160 FPS so far. We're still using more than 80% of our, of our 4090, which is very good to see, but super nice quality, super smooth, no major micro stutters, no major skipping or anything like that. It looks so smooth. This is usually the part right here where it really stutters because of all the physics and all, everything with everything shattering and breaking and the barrel exploding and everything. So let's see what it actually looks like here super smooth 
We do drop a little bit. There was some stuttering there. We, we dropped to about 120 FPS I saw there. 124, 133. So we are still very much CPU limited in this spot here. So if we were running at 4K, you probably would not drop below, I don't know, 100 FPS. That was very smooth. That was fantastic. What's our average going to be though? All right, so here we are back in the settings menu. Let's go back to the benchmark tab. So our average is now 160 FPS in that thing. So we went from 117 to 160 by just having the 4090 in there. Everything else is the same, same CPU same RAM, everything else is the same, but I jumped up an extra like 42 and a half frames. So we went from 117.12 to 159.69, which is the best one to have. So I jumped up 42.57 frames per second by just adding a 4090 in there, which is fantastic. All right, now that we're actually inside of the game doing a real test while actually running around, you, are, you can see the frame rate is super solid here and it is just so butter smooth. The CPU is definitely the limiting factor here, so the faster your CPU is, the faster your frames are going to be, but not bad at all. We're not super duper bottlenecked or anything crazy like that. It runs butter smooth and it's fantastic. Yeah, see now with this stuff, like you can really see the frame rate going down to like 118 or so. Definitely drops a tiny bit due to all the explosions and particles and crazy stuff happening. But the coolest part about this is that this is actually without any sort of frame generation. This is not DLSS 3 or even FSR 2 or XESS. There's nothing going on here for any kind of upscaling or things like that. This is just the pure resolution of the game. Like this is just what you'd be getting native at 1080p. So if we drop to 100 FPS, that's actually not bad given the fact that there's no like upscalers or any other crazy stuff happening from this. This is just the game. You know, this is just how it would run normally. All right, so now jumping into some Remnant 2, which is a brand new title that a lot of people are struggling with. A lot of people are having a lot of CPU limitations to this game. So this should be a very interesting test to see how it handles 1080p, which is inherently where a lot of CPU bottlenecks pop up. But this game luckily does have frame generation down over here, so you can actually turn on the frame generation on the 40 series graphics card, which is fantastic to have. So as always, I'm running this game at 1080p with VSync and everything turned off. So we have quality on DLSS, we have the frame generation on, and everything else is set to ultra with detailed shadows. So how does this run in game? Well, I'm right here in of Ward 13 and I'm getting about 180 FPS looking this way and when I look back towards the NPCs in the AI I drop down to about 140 ish so it's honestly running pretty smooth for me at a 4090 at 1080p but this game definitely is pretty taxing but thankfully the frame generation and the Nvidia DLSS on a 4090 at 1080p lets me still get about 140 FPS in this game. And we're using about 70 to 80 percent of our GPU here, which is pretty good to see that it's not dropping super low. We're not at like 50 percent usage for the 4090, which would be a hardcore CPU bottleneck. And we're still maintaining about 170, 150 FPS, depending on where I look in this whole area here. This is very CPU limited. But now let's go test out an area that is more real, less just hub worldy and something that's actually going to be a big fancy level to go test out. All right, so teleporting over to here to Cotton's Kiln over here, we have tons of fire, tons of smoke, and tons of embers as well, which is making it somewhat CPU limited because of the particles and the, and the effects going on and everything like that. Lots of smoke and fire, which is definitely pretty taxing for CPUs and also VRAM and everything too. So you can see we're getting about 150 FPS in some of these views that we look at, but if we look away from some of the big town area over here, we're getting back to that 200 FPS, but that's all with the frame generation on, so basically just take whatever frame rate I'm at and divide it by two and that's what you'd be getting without frame generation on a 4090. So even during combat here when we're adding even more stuff going on we're dropping to about 100 and what, 130 FPS I was seeing there for a little bit so not super terrible. So this area definitely shows off a bit of the CPU limitation side of things for this game just like that other hub area in Ward 13 did. All right so now we're going to be testing out some Immortals of Avium which actually just came out. It is a brand new game fully utilizing Unreal Engine 5.1. So we have the frame generation on, we have DLSS set to quality, we are running it at 1080p. We also have the game running entirely on the maxed out craziest ultra settings you can possibly have. So let's see how this game does. 
All right, so here we are inside of the game, and it is just incredibly beautiful, incredibly smooth. You can see that we're getting about 120 plus FPS here, which is really good for this game because the default lighting mode is Lumen. It is ray traced global illumination. It does not have any sort of rasterized lighting or baked lighting. It is purely Lumen, and it is just gorgeous to look at. You can really see the Nanite and the Lumen coming together perfectly for some of these flowers or things like the chains on the lantern here here are being actually 3D modeled there. Like, you can really see this game is pushing Unreal Engine 5 to the fullest, and like, the foliage looks nice. The detailing on all of the different models looks amazing and super high polygon count. Like, it is just stunning to look at. This is one of the first real showcases we've had of Unreal Engine 5. But like, look at the water in this game. Look at this area over here. If we just drop down over here, look at this field. Look at the water, the logs and everything, the shading underneath this little plateau area, whatever that is, little platform there. And just the visuals of this game are remarkable. And the fact that we're holding like 150 FPS is insane. It's insane that we're almost able to hold about 160 FPS no matter what we do in this kind of a game and i mean some areas do run like 100 fps some run like 120 ish but this area here can look this good with this much going on with particles and the ships flying over and the water and the lighting and everything and still give you 150 160 fps in the game and that is just a remarkable feat the developers deserve a huge praise huge kudos for making such a gorgeous experience <laughs> i'm getting almost 400 fps in the menu all right, so now we're going to be trying out some Need for Speed Unbound, which is the newest of the Need for Speed games, and racing games in general seem to be more bound towards the CPU, pun intended. So because the frame rates that you get are bound by the CPU that you have and less by the GPU, that's where the NVIDIA frame generation down over here is actually going to come in handy. So if we go over here, you can see that this game finally got support for DLSS frame generation in its latest volume for update. So I have the game running with quality DLSS, 1080p, with everything on Ultra as well. So let's go ahead and see what this can actually do in game. So already just sitting here, at 1080p we are getting almost 300 FPS in this one spot. So let's go ahead and see what our frame rate does whenever I take off. This is a very fast car, so it is going to have to load in assets very, very fast. Let's see what happens if we just keep driving. Oh my gosh, look at that, the 260 FPS while driving? What if we not? What if we just go full speed? Oh my god, look at that! It's not going- oh, there's a 177! So even in a car like this, you are just holding, what, like 170 plus in a game like this because of frame generation? Like that is nuts. Don't crash. <laughs> this car is a little too fast and I haven't played this game in months. But look at this, 200 FPS in a game like this. Again, if you had a 240 Hertz monitor, you would actually be getting the 240 FPS for it. That is insane. We're going like 200 miles an hour in this game and we're still getting about 220 FPS. We're almost getting one FPS per mile that we're going. Holy crap, this is honestly crazy. <laughs> this is nuts. And even in areas with like more trees and more foliage density, this is crazy. This just shows you how fast the 4090 can actually be, but also how groundbreaking the frame generation actually is on top of that, and how much games really, really like having a lot of VRAM to work with. Ah, that is nuts. Let's let's go downhill like this and just start speeding with NOS. Let's see what we can get up to. Oh my god! This is insane! 217 FP or 217 miles an hour, 250 FPS is what I was seeing there. This is nuts, dude. This is nuts. There was a, a tiny micro stutter there because I hit a checkpoint and was loading a new area of the map. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> So this is just unbelievable, honestly. For someone like me who loves the highest FPS possible, who just loves to get frame rate over resolution, this is incredible. Getting over 200 FPS, 260 FPS sitting here, and even while driving at ultra high speeds in this game, we are getting over 180 FPS. <laughs> that is insane. So honestly, for us frame rate snobs out there, buying a 4090 for 1080p is actually kind of great because you just get the best 
best FPS no matter what. Like, you probably could bump it up to 1440p and still get really good FPS. Like, that's probably true. But 1080p, holy crap. The fact that I'm not going below 200 FPS in a game like this where my 3080 was only, like, I think I was maybe getting, like, 90 to 100 FPS in this game without it because I didn't have frame generation. Like, the frame generation is doubling our FPS, which is just nuts, which means that we're getting probably, like, 130 FPS in this game at all times now. So that's, like, a 40 FPS boost over what my 3080 was giving me, which just... It, that's just insane. So this game is unbelievably optimized, and I just love it that I'm getting such a high frame rate in this game. <laughs> it's just great, dude. Just zoom in the highway, getting 230, 240 FPS is just nuts. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my god. <laughs> this is crazy. Ah. This is just insane. Like, I can't even, I, I can't even fathom this this kind of frame rate, honestly. Like, I, I, I kind of want to get a 240 hertz monitor now, just to see what 240 hertz looks like, because I can actually get it in games like this. Like, that's insane. <laughs> so now let's go on to the biggest of big boy games, Cyberpunk. All right, so now for the big boy. Now for Cyberpunk 2077. I am running this game at maximum, completely ultra psycho settings with path tracing turned on, frame generation turned on. Last time I tested this game out, I was only getting like, what, 50, 60 FPS? I, I don't even, it was, it was bad. It wasn't that great. And now I'm getting well over 100 FPS in this game. And look at these views. The big boy, Cyberpunk 2077 has finally been tamed. You Using about 45% of my CPU here in this little town area. We are also using about 80 to 90% of our GPU here, which is good to see. It's fully utilizing that, uh, that 4090 there. It is running really, really smooth and looking gorgeous while doing it as well. And as I walk further away from that little city area with all the people, you can kind of see the frame rate is evening more out at like 120 FPS, which is awesome to see. This is just ridiculously gorgeous and uh, I am legit legitimately impressed by how the 4090 is able to handle this, especially considering I'm only at 1080p and I'm pretty sure we're still CPU limited to a certain extent. And even while driving, it is so butter smooth. I love this. This is fantastic. Holding about 130 FPS while driving is something I never thought I would actually be able to see within Cyberpunk because the original tests that I had were showing like 50 or 60 FPS. But here we are with frame generation, DLSS 3 and everything just really helping pick up these frames. It is quite impressive. And I mean, just look at this insane looking video game here. I am honestly just still blown away by the graphics of this game. And especially now with the path tracing update they've added into this game where you can get the full ray tracing. It is just insane what the game looks like now. And the 4090, once again, just handles it. It is just, it's it, it just eats it for breakfast right now. It's just insane what happens with this game and a 40, with any game in a 4090. It doesn't even care. It's just like, like, lol, is that it? Is that all you got? And then it just kind of spits it out at 200 FPS. And it's only going to get even more pretty and more beautiful and realistic looking as they add in that DLSS 3.5 with the ray reconstruction so it looks even better with ray tracing and path tracing. It's going to look even better. But I just cannot believe what this game freaking looks like. And it's running at 120 FPS completely. And this is with OBS running too, by the way. If I weren't recording in OBS, we'd be getting maybe 10 to 15 extra frames probably. And it would be even better but this is just insane right now. So as we kind of assumed, it is hilariously CPU limiting to put an RTX 4090 in 1080p. Still really impressive though, the amount of frames that we were actually able to get in some of these games. If you have any other games you would like to see me try out, like maybe some CSGO or some Overwatch or any of those like hyper competitive games like Valorant, let me know in the comment down below. But thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you guys are new and I will see you guys next time. Later nerds!